Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, October 16th. It is a cool fall day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. I started to say cold, but I know it will get colder. It's in the 40s this morning, um, which, you know, it's not as cold as it will be. Uh, but it's, uh, it's brisk, let's just put it like that. And uh, it's it's going to... I don't know, we're going to be in the mid-60s today, I think, so far from winter, so I can't complain. So this is um, poorly prepared um, <laughs> at best, but I wanted to give you an update on what's going on with my dad. I wanted to, uh, first off, thank everyone who... Uh, and, and there's a lot of you, far more than I could name, that have offered prayer and support and have reached out to me and, and uh, or just left comments uh, just or, or, or just thought about me or, or thought about my dad and, and everything. Um, he's doing okay. He's, he's doing okay. He's uh, hanging in there. And I'll, I'll give you a little bit of detail on what's going on. But I, I had to... In case you're coming in late, I had to cancel the live stream on Friday because I got some information just like around, it was late, it was like 7 o'clock Friday night, um, The things didn't look too good. And I, I really thought I was going to be um, packing that night for a trip up to Vermont. And, you know, I may still be doing that in the very near future. So, uh, my dad, he's 78. He's in relatively good health. He's got diabetes. He is, he does take insulin. But what happened was he got sick. Uh, everybody got sick. He, he lives with, uh, well, share, he lives with my brother and they share property with my sister who has two, um, uh, my niece and nephew. I'll leave it at that. Um, and everybody got sick. And, you know, they didn't know what it was. They thought it might have been a cold or whatever. And uh, it wasn't severe or anything, but he got a GI bug associated with it. Uh, probably something different because nobody else really had this. And he was not able to stop uh, throwing up and came dehydrated. And I got to the point where my sister took him to the hospital. Actually couldn't get him to the hospital. Had an ambulance come and take him. And while... In the hospital, uh, we discovered that he he actually has a kidney failure. Now, he was diagnosed with this uh, two years, 2019, but he didn't tell anybody. Now, his version of the story is that he doesn't remember it, um, and he was... I don't even know if I talked about this, but he had a seizure occur, and it was related to diabetes back in 2019. He was hospitalized for that. Uh, turned out that it was just a hyperglycemic event, and you know they got things stabilized, and he was fine after that. That's when they told him about the kidney failure, and he doesn't remember it. So it is possible that the seizure affected his memory and, and all that, but my dad's a stubborn old goat which is where I get it. And uh, it's possible also that he just didn't feel like dealing with it. Anyway, he's in the hospital now. He needs dialysis. Uh, they don't know if it's going to be a permanent thing or if it's just temporary, but his kidneys have kind of shut down from the dehydration. Every time they try to do dialysis, his blood pressure drops precipitously. So they haven't been able to do it. And on top of that, he's developed a, uh, a GI bleed. He's, he's bleeding in his stomach. Uh, they went in and looked. They said it's a really large ulcer. Uh, they have him intubated because they, they're afraid that he's going to vomit and aspirate blood into his lungs, which would be really bad. It could lead to pneumonia. And, you know, with everything else going on, that's the last thing that is needed. So he's sedated. He's intubated. Uh, I talked to him just before... A couple days before he went to the hospital and uh, I talked to him yesterday although he couldn't talk to me but he was 
aware enough that my sister was holding the phone and he, he was nodding and, and stuff, so he heard me. Um, and the doctors came in and asked him to open his eyes. He opened his eyes. So he's aware, but he's, you know, in, in a sedated state where he's comfortable with the intubation and all that. And they're hoping that this ulcer is going to heal. And so far, the bleeding has stopped, so that's a real good sign. But, you know, it's not... It's not a, a case where he's, you know, this is 100% he's going to get better, or even 90% that he's going to get better. It's a, it's a touch-and-go proposition. So there's, you know, some real concern there. The good news, and, you know, I attribute this, without question, I attribute this to uh, all the prayer. Um, he appears to be at peace with things. You know, he's... He talked to my sister before they intubated him, and he said, uh, you know, he told her what he wants to happen after he passes. He, you know, they had a good conversation about that. He doesn't seem to be afraid or, uh, you know, in any way overly worried. He, he doesn't want this to be the end, you know. He said that quite clearly. Um, and once we get through all this, I will tell you some hospital stories that will uh, raise the hair on the back of your neck or whatever happens to folks when uh, when they hear stories that they don't want to hear. Uh, it's just, sorry, that, that's another uh, notification coming in, let, letting me know that someone's thinking of me. It's It's just been overwhelming. But anyway, the uh, the bottom line is he's stable, critical, but stable. And uh, we're just sort of waiting and praying and, and hoping for, for the best and hoping that, you know, whatever God's plan is, that it be, it be done. And uh, things are going to be okay regardless. So that's where we're at right now. And again, I really want to thank you all for... Uh, for the support you've shown me over the past couple of days. It's meant the world to me. I, uh, I don't know, I don't know what else to say about it. It's just, you know, I've witnessed it from, from both sides many times now. And, uh, what a wonderful, wonderful group of folks, uh, you all are, we all are, we we should always be proud to be part of this, this community. So, speaking of this community, I am smoking something unusual in my Jamutan Hawkbill, one of the cane rod couch twin pipes. This is a blend called Rugaru from Watch City. So the sample was sent to me by my buddy Jim Finn, uh, premiumpolishedpipes.com. And Jim was kind enough to include the pronunciation for me. But uh, it's a Watch City blend. Apparently it's a once a year thing where they, you know, they only make it once a year. It sells out really quickly. It's a Virginia Perique. The Rougarou, based on the spelling, uh, is probably a call out to the Cajun and or Acadian uh, origins of the Perique. I don't know anything about this blend other than the little bit that Jim told me and what's on the, the bag. I have not had time to research or anything. But it's uh, it's good stuff. It's uh, it's good vapor. Reminds me a lot of uh, Poplar Camp, but then again, it's a vapor, you know. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's good quality one. The, the Virginias are, are uh, mature red Virginias, almost certainly. Again, I didn't look anything up on this. Uh, but it's got that deep sweetness that I like in a in a Virginia Perique. None of the tart, uh, bright Virginia stuff going on. And the, the Perique is respectable. And uh, you got the plummy, figgy, Perique kind of stuff going on. The raisiny Perique. Uh, not terribly spicy on the retro hop. I mean, it's there. It's definitely there, um, but it's not. It's not a perique bomb. It's it's a good solid vapor. So.
if you like such things. I don't know when it comes out. Uh, check out Watch City and see what uh, what's going on there. And uh, maybe if you look in tobacco reviews, there'll be some information on the timing or something. I again, I sorry, I apologize. I just haven't had time to to look into it. But it's delicious. So thank you, Jim, for sharing it with me. And any EU vapor fans, you might want to check it out. So I want to show you something. Um, I put this on Instagram yesterday, and I, you know, I felt a little bit odd doing it because it, there's all this stuff going on, and I got, you know, talking to my sister multiple times a day, and, and you know, getting text message updates from her, and, and letting me know what's going on, and uh, wondering whether I'm going to have to very quickly head up to Vermont. Uh, the reason I haven't done it yet is that, well, there's two things. There's really nothing I can do. And uh, my brother, and I don't know if I've ever talked about this, but, but I have a brother. He's uh, five years younger than me, uh, and he's autistic. And a great guy, you know, love him dearly, but he doesn't handle emotional type things very well. And right now, he knows my dad's sick. He knows he's in the hospital. If I show up, he's going to immediately go into a spiral and I don't want to do that to him you know there's nothing I can do I've talked to my dad by standing there isn't going to change anything I'm sorry I keep doing this but you never know <laughs> you never know what that message is going to be uh, I wouldn't do it if this wasn't going on so yeah uh, I, I that's the reason I haven't gone so anyway I'm here yesterday morning and uh, I gotta do something. I gotta keep busy because otherwise I go into that spiral. I gotta keep my hands busy. So I made me this. This is a dovetail template. Uh, pop, this form is popularized by a guy named Paul Sellers, uh, who's got done some really cool hand hand tool woodworking type stuff on YouTube. I made this. is made out of cherry. I've gone down a rabbit hole where. I don't want to get into the rabbit hole, but, you know, I'm now making tools to make storage boxes to organize stuff to make it possible for me to sharpen lathe tools so that I can then turn pipes on my lathe. That's a long, twisted road, but this is what happens to me. Anyway, I came down here yesterday. I'm like, I got to do something, I, and I didn't want to work on the the carcass that I've been working on to for the storage, the chest of drawers. Um, I've made dovetails in the past, and what I uh, dovetails are for those of you that aren't woodworkers, they're joints that let you bring two boards together like this. And when you look at them, they have a dovetail shape. You probably all know what dovetails are. Uh, you know, in the past, I've made them either using a bevel gauge and measuring them and marking them out that way, or um, just cutting them by eye, which works, and I'll explain why that works uh, when I explain why this doesn't have to be perfect. But Paul Sellers made this, and it, it's a nice little gauge because the one side here is angled. Hopefully you can see that this side is angled, and this side is square. So you can take this on a piece of wood, and if you put the uh, angled side like so, you get the one angle of the dovetail, or you can flip it around and get the other angle. Or when you need to mark across the top, you just use the square part, and you can mark across the top. So this way you can mark out the dovetails using just this gotta do a lot of other measurements and stuff but you know it gets you there and you say well how can that be you know it's wood I made this with nothing but two saws a chisel and card scrape and that's it this hasn't been sanded there's no no refinement beyond that so how can that work you know you need accuracy and everything well this 90 degrees has to be accurate and it is you know it is uh, I, and that's not hard to do. You're sawing on a straight line. You, you can get that kind of accuracy. 
And the angle, and this is a one in seven angle, and that's, I'd like it to be that. And, you know, it's as close to that as I need it to be. It doesn't have to be the same from side to side because you cut the tails out and then you use that to mark out the board that you're going to cut the pins in. So they always match. They don't have to be the same. They don't have to be accurate. I mean, you, you, could, you could space them any way you want. You could cut every one at a different angle. But because you use the tails to mark out the pins, they have to match. Of course, you can cut them wrong, and you can cut the pins wrong, and they won't match, but that's another problem with me. So, the point is, this does not have to be, like, machinist accurate. It just has to be woodworking accurate, and it is. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but these are lines that I drew. Uh, these using the square uh, coming down from this lower edge, so actually marking this way with the yeah, square like that. So these two square lines are, you know, relatively, I'm sorry, I'm having a lot of trouble holding at the right angle here. These are pretty parallel, and uh, I've actually measured them. They're within a few uh, ten thousandths at, at the far end, and keep in mind you're only marking out usually across the top of a board that is going to be three quarters of an inch or less. So that's plenty square enough for, for that. And the angles, um, I marked one coming in this way and then the other one flipping it around to the other side coming in this way so they'd be the same angle and you can see that they are fairly parallel right there so this is going to be just fine uh i'm happy made myself a dovetail template uh but it occupied my mind made myself a dovetail template and threw it on the ground it occupied my mind uh it occupied my hands kept me from going places where I might have felt helpless and at the same time I could feel productive and and you know that's important it's uh, sometimes we have to do things like that they have we have to there's something therapeutic in keeping bus busy during times of stress it's hard to do but it's, that's why it's good to have hobbies like woodworking or you know pipe smoking cleaning your pipes that kind of stuff it it gives you something to do with your hands when you need to do something with your hands uh, as I was doing this, I was thinking about my dad, obviously, and thinking about, you know, doing work around the house with him. He, he wasn't a woodworker. He, he's not a woodworker. He never really had a workshop, but he, he was always doing home repair, home improvement type stuff. And, uh, I remember very, very clearly, because it was one of these formative moments that you have, uh, kneeling down on the floor with a block of wood and nails and hammering the nails in and uh i don't know how old i was but i was at whatever that age is when your dad's doing something and to keep you busy because you're helping him uh you're given a block of wood and nails and a hammer <laughs> you tell it i mean i think everybody goes through that and uh he came over and he said you know, don't hold the hammer like that you know because I don't have a hammer here, but, you know, I'm a little kid, and I'm, I got it all choked up, and I'm holding it very close to the head of the hammer. And he said, no, don't, don't do that, because you can't get enough force when, when you strike. Hold it down at the bottom, and that'll let you swing it harder, and, you, and the nail go in. And I did that, and sure enough, I was able to, because I was, like, banging away on this nail, and it wasn't going in after the first, you know, quarter inch or so. And I learned that day how to swing a hammer, but it's something that I've thought about. And, and, you know, I can remember being in high school, taking physics and learning about torque. And the, the teacher was talking about this in, in terms of, uh, you know, rotational forces. And he said, you know, why don't we put a doorknob in the middle of the door? And if you think about it, that would be, that would make it a lot more difficult to open the door because you don't have the, the leverage on it. And when he said that, it just, I just flashed back to that moment of my dad telling me about the force of the hammer. And I thought, oh, you know, that's, that's torque, that's rotational energy. And so, you know, my dad taught me physics at a very young age. <laughs> I, I've learned a lot from him and I hope that, uh, I hope that I get some time to continue to learn from him. 
because uh, I know he's, he's still got a lot to teach me. If not, um, you know, he's he's prepared. I'm prepared, and uh, he'll 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 be with with God. So, and my mom. There's a. Uh, it's a win-win in a sense. I know that's a little strange to say, but I, I believe that. I truly do believe that. The end of a life is always tragic. It's always hard on the people that are left behind. But the end of a life well lived is something that should be celebrated and uh, you know we, we all have to do that in our own way we all have to grieve obviously they'll be grieving uh, but there should be a sense of joy as well uh, even even when there's tragedy associated as hard as that might be we've been blessed by the person by, by the gift of that life and even if it were to end tragically, we need to be thankful for that blessing. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking off the top of my head now and, and babbling, to be frank. Thank you for tolerating that. Thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you again for all your prayers, your thoughts, your kind words. They, they truly mean the world to me. Uh, please keep praying. It's, it's helping, not not just for my dad. Um, you know, what's going to happen with him is going to happen. Uh, God's will be done. If he can recover, that would be wonderful. But if that's not in the cards, you know, pray for the family. Pray for the people close to him. My brother in particular. My sister, too. She's, she's having a hard time with all this. And niece and nephew, they're, you know, they're there. And it's harder on them. So keep them in your prayers, please. How are your kind thoughts or wishes? And uh, with that, folks, I'm going to call this tune in. I do not know when I'll be back. I don't know what the future holds. I'm going to try real hard to do a live stream on Friday. But you know, I'm not going to promise anything. So watch for an announcement probably on Thursday. Uh, if, if I can, I, I want to do it because it's therapeutic for me, too. Uh, if not, you know, hopefully I'll be able to give you these updates on, on Sunday. Uh, we'll just see how things go. And I do use the posts on YouTube. And, of course, if you follow me on Instagram, I can keep you posted there as well. But, uh, you know, fingers crossed, I will see you on Friday night. So with that, you all take care. Have a fantastic Sunday and a wonderful week ahead. And uh, God bless you all. Bye now. Mm -hmm.